good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day. It is good to be gathered here together as the people of God, to be in community, um, to hear the word, to sing the songs, to be in prayer, and just simply to be together. I'm Reverend Michelle, the lead pastor here. A couple um, ways that you can connect, and they both actually are coming up this week. The first is Dia de los Muertos. So we will have our altar set up here um, in the front doors. Those times, the times for Tuesday have changed, so ignore what's up there. Um, and I'll make sure the website is updated later today. Um, so if you live in the neighborhood and want to come by with a picture or something to remember someone in your family who has died, you are welcome to do that. And we're still looking for some hospitality hosts on Wednesday, and you can um, use the QR code or uh, the website has information about that. And then next Sunday, we're planning to do a new members class. So if you are interested in learning more about the United Methodist Church or this congregation, um, we invite you to come. There's no commitment. You're welcome to come and just listen and learn and ask questions and then decide if you'd like to join the church. Um, I will explain more in a bit, but I'm in the midst of finishing up some papers, and my brain, as much as I thought it was on, it is not. Um, the scripture that's in your bulletin is incorrect. So if you're someone that wants to follow along, there are two this morning. It's Isaiah 52, 7, and Mark 1, 1 through 3. So my apologies, my apologies to our liturgist, but um, she's now up to speed um, as well. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin worship by singing our opening song, How Great Is Our God. Welcome to worship. standing and join me in the call to worship as you'll see on the screen. As we gather this day, each of us brings something to worship. We bring, we bring prayer, prayers of hope and prayers of anguish. We bring our faith, tattered or whole as it may be. We all offer to God whom we worship today. Again, I invite you to stand and if you're able and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
for some children to join you. All right, we have the children's moments if they'd like to come up and join Reverend Jeanette. Test, test. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Is everybody awake yet? Kind of waking up still? I would have to tell you, it took me a bit of time to get out of bed this morning. I was, I was, it took, I was probably laying in bed for about 30 minutes, and I finally, Charlie was like, come on. So I made it here, and I'm so glad you all did too. So I want to ask you a question here. How many of you like stories about ships on the sea? Anybody like stories about ships on the sea? Yeah? Okay. I need you to help me to pretend something, okay? Let's all pretend that we are on a ship. Now, I know some of you are sailors here. I mean, really, serious sailors, right, Emily? So you're going to have to help me. We're going to pretend that we're raising the sail. How, do we, how would we raise a sail? If you had to pretend you were doing it now, like how do you? Right? So let's all do that. Let's <laughs> raise the sail of our ships, right? Very good job. And now it's feeling a little bit rocky. Oh no, the waves are rocking the ships, so we're going to go back and forth. Do you feel that? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Congregation can help as well in this call and response prayer, okay? So let us pray. A story about a rainbow. Best book ever. A story about a baby in a manger. Best book ever. A story about God's love for us. A story about how we should treat each other. Amen. Amen. Good job. All right, let's go to kids' life now. As we continue in worship, it is time uh, for us to share those prayers that we have on our hearts, joys, and uh, those things that we're struggling with, that we might pray together about them. So are there prayers that you have? Mandy. My husband just tragically lost one of his closest cousins. Mm. Anthony and the death of his cousin. Yeah. Lillian. Mm -hmm. 
to new prayers for Craig and his family. Yes. Jill. Yes, Jenny's having back surgery Thursday. Are you, is it overnight? Will you be in the hospital? More days than that. Okay. Yeah. Several days. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ursula. Mandy. Yeah, that whole area. Um, mm -hmm. Jill. For the hostages and the war also continuing in Russia and Ukraine. Yes. Charlie. I think uh, something too is that so, uh, I, I think it was after I just recently passed yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, which may or may not have been part of it, but I think what brings the light is a prayer for all those who continue to show addiction and the strength that they've overcome. Yes. And also, uh, and Joy, uh, you may have said previously, but uh, I got to see it for the first time this morning, so uh, John fixed the uh, sign out front. Yes. Yes. It is now well anchored and um, looks great, so yes, thank you. Yeah. Was there another one? Um, I have a few. Uh, Reverend Jeanette's Aunt Dolores died just a couple days ago, um, over the weekend or during the week, I guess. So prayers for her family. Um, my brother sent me to yesterday. Jose, who is the father of a co-worker, is recovering from surgery. And a friend of uh, my brother's, Cassandra, um, has had a return of cancer. So prayers for her. Um, we lost a couple days ago one of our retired United Methodist bishops, William Boyd Brove, who uh, was my grandmother's cousin. So one of those in my family who went before me as United Methodist clergy. And to just read through the Facebook post, he was a man who touched so many lives. Um, so prayers for Mary Lou and his family. Um, and uh, so this week, Thursday, my papers are due. This is the last part of the application um, to be fully ordained in the United Methodist Church, hence why my brain, even though I think it's all together, um, really is not. Um, but Thursday it will be. Um, so just prayers in these last couple days that um, I could communicate clearly, and then it's out of my hands until interviews in March. Um, so thank you for that. And then we have a birthday today is Charlie's birthday. So a joy there. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are so grateful for this relationship that you call us to every day. You call us to come closer. You call us to learn more. You call us to trust more faithfully. You call us to believe that you are who you say you are and that you love us in the ways that you do. And so we lift to you all that has been voiced today in those prayers that remain quiet in our heart. We pray those with uh, your people gathered in all places around the world today. We pray that you would open us to a deeper relationship with you so that we might be brighter lights of hope and joy and love in the world. We pray for those who grieve, for Reverend Jeanette and her mom and all of her family, for Dolores' children and her family. We pray for Anthony as he is grieving the loss of his cousin. We pray for those who have health concerns, for Jose and for Cassandra, for Craig, for Jenny, we pray for Malia, we pray for the family of um, Bispo, Bishop Grove, as they mourn his loss. We pray for peace, God, as close as our own families and neighborhood and as far away as Ukraine and Russia and the Middle East. We just ask that your spirit would move in ways that would bring peace. We pray for those innocent people, hostages, and uh, people who just live 
in the midst of all of the fighting, whose lives have been forever changed. We pray for those who are at work there, offering care and medical aid and all that they need. We pray for uh, myself and my colleagues who are in the midst of writing these papers that you would be with us in this last several days. And we give you um, praise for celebrations and for Charlie's birthday. We thank you for the gift that he is to this congregation. And we thank you for John um, getting that sign put back out front. We know that that sign makes a difference to our neighbors as they walk by and see clearly stated that we welcome all people. We welcome all people, God, because you welcome all people, even us. And we give you thanks for all of the ways that you work in us and through us. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen so the scripture reading today is from the first one from the old testament is isaiah 52 uh, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Excuse me, your God reigns. <laughs> I thought there was another sentence to follow. <laughs> and now let me move to Mark. Verse 1, 1 through 13. At the beginning of good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. The word of God for the people of God. So now, please join me. You can remain seated. And you want them to stand? That was, you or you were just clearing them? your throat? <laughs> Stand up before you have to sit down again. All right, we are we are in the green Hemdel again. So please, uh, three zero zero two. <clears throat>
So we are halfway through uh, this short series of an overview of the Bible, and it's important for us to be grounded in Scripture because those of us who are Christians or anyone who is exploring what Christianity means, the foundation of what we think, say, and do should be an effort to follow Jesus, and the way we know who Jesus is and how to follow him is to read uh, the stories of our scriptures. John Wesley, who was one of the founders of the movement that became uh, Methodism, his life spanned most of the 18th century, and he sought a return to the faith of the original disciples, so those who knew and immediately followed Jesus. For John Wesley, scripture was central to life and to faith, and he believed that Christianity, the faith that we follow, was built on four grand pillars divine power, the source of all miracles, divine understanding, prophecies, divine goodness, the goodness of our doctrine, what we believe, and divine holiness, the moral characters of those who wrote the scriptures. I believe that when we read and study the scriptures and we invite God to come into our understanding, our faith is strengthened and deepened, our lives are transformed, and we become better equipped to take a step toward Jesus and emulate his life. I understand our scriptures as writings that were inspired by God's spirit. People who experienced God at work in them and through them and around them in the world with divine inspiration passed these stories down orally at first and eventually they were written down. It's important to remember that the wisdom we gain from the Bible isn't human wisdom. It is God's wisdom written in a way that helps us to understand better who God is and, and teaches us how to live as God intends us to live. And scripture, reading and studying and seeking to understand scripture is one of those ways that God speaks to us. Uh, John Wesley said about the scriptures that God speaks through them, in them, to us, not as man, but as God. His thoughts are very deep and thence his words are of inexhaustible virtue. I love all the big fancy words. And thence God's words are of inexhaustible virtue. The Holy Spirit is present in more than just how the scriptures were written. The, the Spirit continues to be present in and at work in us, helping us to understand what it says, helping us to learn how to apply the, what the words say so that we might uh, be better in tune with what God is trying to say to us through them. So over these weeks, this is what we are looking at. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did the big picture, just this overview of the Bible, which begins at creation and goes through to the end of time, earthly time. Last week, we looked at the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, and those covenants, those promises that God made between God and humans, um, promises made in the context of relationship and for cooperation, for good work in the world, uh, to do that work of redeeming um, the brokenness that we have made the world into that perfection that God intends. Today we look at a little bit of the New Testament, uh, the good news of Jesus. Um, the New Testament be begins with the life and ministry of Jesus. Jesus came to open up, to begin the kingdom of heaven on earth. Uh, preparing us for, inviting us to be a part of that time when God's kingdom would be fully uh, established. And then next week we'll look at, so what do we do with the Bible? How do we read it? How do we study it? How do we apply it? We aren't meant to engage with the Bible in a passive manner. It is not just information for us to read and take in and think about. The narratives, the stories that are in the Bible with the power of the Holy Spirit are meant to shape our hearts, to shape our hearts and our lives and our actions. In those stories, we read how our parents and faith experience God good, God's goodness and love in their lives with the understanding that God wants us 
to experience goodness in our own lives. We read how sin destroys what God creates, and we read how God's love and grace never, ever end. So the scriptures are a guidebook for how to live faithfully through stories of people who sometimes got it right, more often than not got it wrong, but undergirded by this foundational knowledge that God meets us right where we are and loves us enough to call us to move beyond where we are. God seeks to have a relationship with each of us, and one of the ways we engage with that is through the Bible. So last week, as we looked at the Hebrew scriptures, the beginning of time until Jesus' birth, the New Testament begins with Jesus' birth and on. Um, the Hebrew scriptures began with the story of creation. The New Testament begins with the story of Jesus, and it begins with the Gospels. And gospel, the word for gospel in Greek, means good news. So that tells us, just by knowing that those first four books are referred to as the gospel, that tells us what we should be listening and watching for. We should be paying attention for good news. We should be listening for how Jesus and his life and ministry was good news. And knowing the character of God, as we looked in the Old Testament last week, we're to understand at a deeper level that this is good news for all people, not just the Jews, not just Christians, but for all people. Like in the New Testament time, when these Gospels were being written, people today, some live on a cushion of good. They have money, they have a home, they have food, they have the freedom to go where they want and do what they want. But so many more live without those things. They live under oppression. They live without having a safe place to be. They live without a home or food or clean water or access to education or they're oppressed because of their gender or their sexuality or their religious and faith beliefs and so many, many other reasons. Jesus brought good news, not just for the people who were living in um, hard and difficult and oppressive conditions then, but through all of time. Jesus' good news continues to be good news for those living today under oppression and in difficult time. And we learn about this good news of Jesus across the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John each tell the story of Jesus from a different perspective and for a different purpose. There are some stories found in all four Gospels. There are some stories you'll read that have um, very similar parts to them. You'll know, oh, hey, I read that in Mark. Um, and then there are some details that change, and not all of the stories are found in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are referred to as the synoptic gospels, and those three are the most alike each other. They have the most uh, similarities, and they follow the same basic timeline. Synoptic, that word means common perspective. So 90% of the stories told in Mark, we also find in Matthew and Luke. And then John, 90% of his gospel is unique. Right, so we have these four Gospels, each from a different writer, a different perspective, for a different purpose, some stories told in all of them, some stories not told in all of them, three that are very similar, and John, who's kind of off by himself. I really like the Gospel of John, but it is very different from the others. The synoptics, Matthew, Mark, Luke, cover a year about of Jesus' ministry, and really is told in these short episodes and conversations, while John covers two and probably three years of Jesus' uh, ministry, and we know that because there are three cycles of festivals that John talks about in his gospel. And John's gospel has these longer discourses and conversations. The synoptics emphasize inheriting the kingdom of God, and John talks about inheriting eternal life. 
The synoptic gospels have a lot of historical events. John wants us to discover and uncover what those events mean. The synoptic gospels have these short sayings of Jesus, and as I said, John has these longer discourses and conversations. Synoptics have an emphasis on future prophecy, um, and John is a lot about this unique relationship between Jesus and God, that Jesus is the Son who came to earth to reveal the Father to us. The Gospels are in some ways biographies of Jesus, but ancient bi biographies served a different purpose than what we might consider today as a biography. They weren't chronological stories of someone's life, but were written and shared with the intent of offering the purpose of a key figure's life. And they were written um, with the intent of persuading the readers, persuading those who were hearing it, um, to emulate whoever this person was. So this was more than just information about who they were and what they did in their life. It was this, who were they and what did they do and what the heck difference does that make uh, to me? The four gospel stories, each intended for a specific audience, and they each do this work of um, giving a biography of Jesus in a way that would make the different readers, the different hearers, us today, see some different perspective of Jesus. Something that would seem of interest to us, something that would make us want to be more like Jesus. Matthew wrote primarily to the Jews, and his sort of theme was that Jesus, this new man that had come to earth, was greater than the prophets, was greater than Moses, and that in Jesus we had the fulfillment of those Old Testament prophecies. Mark wrote primarily to the Romans that Jesus was this unexpected Messiah, and we have in there this juxtaposition of this Messiah who had been, uh, people had been waiting for for so long, juxtaposed with the crucified Christ. Luke wrote to the Greeks um, about that Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies that God's salvation would be for the whole world and not just for the Jews. And John wrote to the church, these new churches, that Jesus was Israel's God become human and that there was eternal life for all who would trust in him and for those who would follow him. I think it's interesting, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it, um, to know about the sources for the synoptic gospels as this chart shows. So you can see how there, is, there are these little parts that are individual and particular to each of the synoptic writers, um, and some overlap in there as well. As I said, they each had their own target audience and their own purpose, but they were writing about the same person of Jesus, each trying to persuade a different audience about why they should know and follow Jesus, about why Jesus was good news for them and their context. So that middle part um, where you see that there are these overlaps and shared information explains, if you're reading all of the Gospels, especially the Synoptics, why we hear these similar stories. They were having, uh, writing from the same source. Um, we think Mark was written about 66 AD, and John was the last written about 50 years later. So while the Hebrew scriptures that we looked at last week spanned 1,500 years and were 500 to 1,000 years before Jesus, um, these were written in about 50 years. If I did that math right. Yes, about 50 years. Um, we do see in here the pieces of God's promises to one day restore and redeem all people. Right? We hear that in those Old Testament stories and the covenants that we looked at last week, these promises that God made to God's people. Um, come and be a part of what I am doing. Pay attention, follow the rules, live in right relationship. As Christians, we believe that that work of redemption was done through the death and resurrection of Jesus. So it is important to have these stories of Jesus. We know what the good news is. 
Old Testament writers wrote out of their relationship with God and their experiences of God at work in the world and their lives and the things that God told them for their own good and for the good of the people. We know that they were waiting for this promised Messiah who God had said would come and do that work of redemption. So we can look back from the Old Testament and see that Jesus was the Messiah who the world was waiting for, the one that God had promised. But it was hard as they were being written for people to see that. So let's um, uh, look back at the first passage that Sharon read for us earlier. This is from Isaiah, one of those Old Testament Hebrew scripture books. And Isaiah writes, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. It's easy for us as New Testament people, as Christians, people seeking to follow Jesus, to read into Isaiah, well, he's talking about Jesus coming, right? Um, what are the images that we have here? We have the beautiful feet of a messenger on top of a mountain. Um, we might imagine or lay on there that because of the word feet, we're to understand that there is some action involved, right? This isn't someone just sitting proclaiming good news, but there is movement here. That the messenger is on the top of a mountain um, says that this is news for a large group of people. If the messenger were at the bottom of a valley, the only people who would be able to hear, if we make this mental picture, were the people who were right there. But that the messenger is on top of a mountain tells us to know that this is for a wide audience. And the messenger, who has beautiful feet, is on the move sharing good news. What is the good news being shared from the top of the mountain for all to hear is in there as well. There is peace and salvation. There is news, your God reigns. When God reigns, there is peace. When God reigns, there is salvation. The prophet Isaiah tells us that we should expect and wait for the, this announcement of good news, that this announcement of peace was not just for a specific slice of time, but it was for the salvation of all people across all time, that that would come and that was good news. So we look to the Gospels knowing that they tell us the stories of Jesus among us and that they are good news. So how should we read the Gospels knowing that they each represent this different perspective and written for a different purpose? So as we're reading the Gospels, there are four things to know. Jesus is Lord, and here's why you should follow him. We should be paying attention to repeated words and phrases. Something that is repeated, a word or a phrase, is something to pay attention to. It's there for a reason. Um, and we should also be watching and listening for how the other characters in the story respond to Jesus. That gives us some insight. And one commentator said, read it, read it, read it. These are stories that are alive still as we read them, seeking the Holy Spirit to do that work in us, to read them and become familiar with them. So we are to engage the New Testament and especially looking at the Gospels for looking who Jesus is, not just historically, but who Jesus is today. And it is a good opportunity for us to remember that the world, our neighbors, those people that we encounter on a daily basis who are not Christians, know or paint a picture or get some idea of who Jesus is by who we are. The world and our neighbors and everyone we encounter know Jesus through us. Whether or not they can articulate it, the world looks to those who proclaim to be Christians to learn about Jesus. Hypocrisy and judgment and maintaining the status quo are not how we are called to live as followers of Jesus. We are called to live with kindness and compassion and love and inclusion because that's who Jesus is. And that's how people know who he is and what it means to follow him. 
So we must consider that you and I today are those messengers with beautiful feet on the top of a mountain, messengers of the gospel, and we share that news in how we live and how we speak and how we treat other people. We share the good news in how we use our money and our time and our resources, and that's how we show the world today who we know Jesus to be. As Christians, as people seeking to follow, God, uh, follow Jesus, our job is to continue to do that work of sharing the good news of the gospel to all people in all places. The good news began with the birth of Jesus, but as we heard in today's gospel reading, one came before Jesus to prepare the way. Let's look back at Mark 1, uh, the first three verses. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Mark begins his gospel by telling readers what, that what he is about to unfold, what he is about to write, is good news. And then he points us back to the prophecy from Isaiah that says, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way. Mark wants us to know that Jesus is this Messiah, the one who has been promised since the time of Isaiah, the one who people have been waiting for. And Isaiah told us that one would come before Jesus to prepare the way. He's telling us about John, Jesus' cousin, that one who went before Jesus, preaching repentance and pointing people to the one who would come after him. John was a messenger, preparing the world for the good news, for the gospel that was coming in Jesus. Mark says, what I'm about to tell you about Jesus is good news. Connect the dots from what you know from Isaiah to what has happened in the life and teachings of Jesus. This messenger who would go before Jesus, John, got the people ready to hear the good news, that Jesus would come, a man who walked the earth, a man who walked among us, that he was the Christ, he was the promised Messiah, the one who would rescue and redeem us, and that he was the Son of God, he was God come to earth, incarnate put flesh on god's promises for all people from the hebrew scriptures were about to come true john had come to prepare the way for jesus ministry for the time when jesus definite divinity and purpose would be revealed to the world now you and i may know how the gospels end we know that god's redemption of the world would come through Jesus' sacrificial act of death on the cross, and that our hope for eternal life would come through Jesus' resurrection. The remainder of the New Testament is really about how to continue to live as followers of Jesus, how we live and behave as the church, as the gathered body of Christ in the world, in ways that continue to display and proclaim the good news of Jesus to those we encounter and to the whole world. God continues to speak to us through the Bible, and we continue to encounter Jesus as we read the books of the New Testament and as we try each day to live more faithfully according to how Jesus lived and what he taught. And I continue to discover that the more I read, the more I uncover and find those places in my life and in my heart that need to be softened, that need to be transformed. It's a lot, and yet it was so not um, anything of the New Testament. There is so much there. If you're interested in learning more, not just about the Gospels, um, but about the New Testament, The Bible Project is this fabulous resource that has videos and online classes and information um, that's really, um, really, really well done. They have a series, it's 32 videos that are eight to 10 minutes long each um, that cover the books of the New Testament. So it starts in the Gospels, but then continues 
through. So that QR code will take you to the link where those videos are. And I would just encourage you, this will, I, I'm not doing any church homework this week until my papers are due, but after that, um, right, I'm going to go back through and watch these, I think, to remember what the New Testament tells us and teaches us is so important about how we live today. These are ancient stories that continue to have meaning and purpose for us today. You and I are those messengers bringing the good news to the world, and it is good news for all people. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the words of Scripture. We give you thanks for those prophecies from the Hebrew scriptures that point us to Jesus. We give you thanks for Jesus' presence on earth, for his ministry, for his life, his teaching, for his death, and for his resurrection. In him, we see the great love that you have had and have still for all people in all time. And as we strive to live more like Jesus, we pray that as we encounter and engage with the scriptures, your Holy Spirit would help us to understand better and to be more faithful in how we live and how we share the good news through our own lives. We give you thanks, God, for who you are, for your work in the world, in us, and through us. Amen. We know that so many of you um, give online, and we are grateful for that. If you'd like to make a donation, an offering this morning, I'll put the plate here, and you're welcome to come forward. we are grateful for the good work that you do in us, for the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would take these offerings and those that have been given online, that you would bless them and help us to continue to be a place in Mission Hills that welcomes all people, that shares the good news of the gospel, that lives in ways that share light and hope and love. Amen. Amen. Um, a couple things. One is uh, tonight there will be on Zoom a prayer vigil. It's our annual conference. Um, is gathering for a time really to focus on the war that's happening in Israel um, and Gaza. 
And I did a social media post this morning that has the Zoom information, if you'd be interested in that. That starts at 5. And uh, next Sunday is the time change. So fall back. We'll just be here. You know, we're going to have worship at 10 at whatever time our body thinks that is. Um, so make sure you set your clock back this week. Go out into today and go out into this week believing in the depths of your soul that God has created you and called you and loves you and asks you to be part of sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world in all the ways that you can. Go knowing that you are loved by the one who created us, the one who redeems us, the one who comforts us. Amen. Thank you.